Well, thank you, Journey Wade Hack, for joining me at the Rose Wall this week. This is our final review tonight, and uh, I want to kind of just recap the week a little bit uh, for both of us. I really enjoyed your company. I enjoyed doing it this way, and I didn't think I would. I, I certain aspects of the red carpet I miss certainly, mm -hmm. but this has been really comfortable, really uh, much easier to do. Uh, was it for you? How was it for you, Jeremy? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's quite different. Um, a lot less stress with the, the compared with running and being on time and, and the pace of the of the in person red carpet. Uh, it's been a pleasure to be with you. Oh, well, thank you. So, what did we do last Friday? We started with Bill Murray. Um, then we had the virtuosos Riz Ahmed, Maria Bakalova, Kingsley Benadir. Andre Day, Vanessa Kirby, and Zadaya, all in one night. Then after that, we did Carrie Mulligan, who, by the way, is hosting SNL this Saturday, April 10th. Then we had the artisans, the behind-the-scenes genius, editing sound, original song, production design, hair, makeup, costumes, cinematography, wonderful. I, I like those people the best, really, because without them, as we've learned over and over again, there's no story. There's no third dimension. Certainly. Uh, then we had, of course, the ever so amazing Sasha Baron Cohen, Delroy Lindo, of course, as, who starred in The Five Bloods, the Spike Lee film. And then uh, tonight we're wrapping up Amanda Seyfried for Mank, her, her role as Marion Davis in Mank. So it's been, it's been a lot of work, but it seems like in some ways a bit less work than what we normally have done in the past years. I don't know, maybe we're just more comfortable in these chairs. Not sure which one it is. So we saw Amanda Seyfried tonight. She was, um, the moderator was Ann Thompson, uh, who uh, interviewed her for the Santa Barbara International Film Festival Montecito Award. She's also got an Academy Award nomination for the movie Mank, for the role she played as Marion Davis in Mank. She was, to quote Anne Thompson, the right actress in the right place. And then we saw later on in this uh, online interview, David Pincher came on to say that he was actually nervous to talk to her because what if he turned her down? I was surprised to hear that from David Pincher. What, what if she turned him down? Yeah, yeah. what if she turned him down? Yeah, uh, that's, that's always surprising to hear from a big time director, but she is a big star. She seemed to be a little bit surprised by that too, watching her face when we saw him come online to uh, uh, congratulate her. So um, she's been working for 20 years. She started as a model in New York at the age of 10 and did that uh, until she was about 12. Uh, then she got into musical theater and then soap operas, took singing lessons and vo voice coaching. And finally, uh, what really launched her, to career, her career at the age 17 was uh, Mean Girls, written by, and I guess Tina Fey has a role in that as well. Absolutely, yeah. It's a classic by now. He said it was a cult classic earlier, and I think it is for a certain cult. <laughs> <laughs> My generation is Yeah, it's yeah very that's popular. sort of what I was pointing yeah, to this yeah, end this of cult. the generational arc here. Mm. Um, because I never saw it and now I have to see it. Now I really want to see it. If it's a classic and it's super funny and people are still quoting lines from it. Absolutely. Absolutely, yeah. It's worth seeing at least once, even if you don't like it, you know, give it a shot. I think you will like it though. Well, the clip I saw was clever. So, the whole yeah. Movie's Quite clever, Is I would it say. Like yeah. that? Yeah. yeah, it's it's good stuff. Well, it's all right, good stuff. then I will do. I'm just going to list some of the things that she's been in that we saw in clips as we were watching this online interview. Veronica Mars, Mamma Mia, huge role in a huge movie. Dear John, she sings live in Les Miserables. Sings. This is where we get a little bit of um, of her singing voice. But she had to do all of it live. Mm -hmm. uh, in, she plays Linda Lovelace, a porn star with Sharon Stone, uh, first reformed with Ethan Hawke, A Million Ways to Die in the West with Seth MacFarlane, and so, so many more. 
Chops is sort of an understatement. She really mm-hmm. does. And she's only 35 years old. It's, yeah. it's, it's mind-boggling to me, the, some of the talent, some of these people, ha- the ones that we've interviewed and the ones we've seen in the past. It's, they, they seem to live in a different realm of just pure talent. I don't know, talent is to me a real, something you can uh, grasp onto and hold. But it seems like it's otherworldly. Well, certainly at this level that we're seeing uh, uh, exhibited at the festival and out in the wider film world, it it is otherworldly and that's part of the beauty of it. Isn't it ever? My gosh. So then she was asked by Ann Thompson, so what are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? And she said, quite frankly, that she's, truth is her, her strength, her search for truth in everything. And finding the deeper meanings of things is one of her best strengths. Uh, that she wants to play everybody. She's open and she's available and really is excited about playing everybody. That's the way she put it. I want to play everybody. And I thought that was, that was brave. Uh, and she, she's planning to play everybody in my estimation. She, she will do. And she's really good at whacking a mosquito. That's another one of her strengths because one of the things we see in these intimate uh, online interviews is people in their homes. And she's in a barn that was built for her. It's like almost like a sound studio uh, in, was it Pennsylvania? She's on the East Coast somewhere because I remember yeah. the sun was setting. She's in her barn and she said, I'm upstate. So that's upstate New York. Probably. Yes, I'm upstate in the early part of the interview and she whacks a mosquito <laughs> and she's dressed very glamorously. She's, she's got a beautiful gown on. She's the person that was the most dressed up in all of these online interviews. I think she went all out with the hairdo and everything and then she whacks a mosquito. <laughs> That's hilarious. One of her strengths. Her weakness, she said, she's just flat out lazy. Sometimes she'll have all of her lines done and other times She'll turn up at the set and her lines aren't really quite in cement. And her other weakness is, and something that she wants to work on, is that she really, she's uncomfortable doing really physical roles. Mm -hmm. And I think by that she means, of course, you know, karate and and, uh, picking up a rifle and and doing something like Wonder Woman. Probably, yeah, backflips and so forth. Yeah, she doesn't seem the type, does she? She's got an ethereal beauty. And she seems refined and delicate, and she seems very lay mis, doesn't she? Yeah, yeah. I don't see her and very Marion Davis. Oh boy, did she kill it in Mank with Marion Davis working opposite Gary Oldman, and she talked a lot about that relationship, and what it's like to work across someone like Shirley MacLaine in in another movie that they did together. She she doesn't seem very daunted at all by working across and with some of these mega, mega talents. She's really able to step up to plate, it seems, in every instance. And we're excited to see, you know, what, what she does with the remaining do. main career, yeah. So who would you like to see her portray? Because she wants to play everybody. Is there a figure or a story or a person you'd like to see her play opposite uh, that she could do in the future? Uh, I'd like to see her play everybody as well. I don't, <laughs> <laughs> I don't have the, quite the answer on, on hand, but uh, she's very gifted and she clearly has great range, so it would be nice to see just where, she, where her passion takes her. Well, her passion right now is to play Glenda in the, um, the play Wicked. She's practically begging for the, the part on, mm. online. Mm-hmm. And then she says, I'm made for Glenda. I can just be Glenda. That's the, you know, the, the kind witch. Yes, yes, the, the Did good you ever witch see of, Wicked? I didn't see Wicked, but I'm familiar with uh, Wizard of Oz and so forth. And yeah. yeah, the good witch. It'd be good to see her do more musicals. Incredible. Uh, that's what she's aiming for as well, more musicals. And the other thing, the last thing she said that really I, I thought, two things she said I thought were really interesting. Um, she She's always... Um, gone for diversity, so she's turned down certain points when, or parts rather where um, maybe there wasn't enough diversity or maybe she was being mm, kind of shoved into a character role and you can get stuck there. Um, she, she likes to manipulate the audience 
in the sense that they never know what she's going to do next. Did you catch that in the interview? She has, she loves that idea of having so much diversity in her career. She's actually consciously manipulating the audience. Uh, yeah, I caught that, and it it seems uh, a smart move and a, an interesting one to just always keep people on their toes. You never quite know if she's uh, what kind of character she's going to be just because her name's on the billing. But her awareness of how she can manipulate the audience comes from maybe stage work. Not sure. Some people have that, and some people don't. I think. And uh, then the last thing she said that I really enjoyed was, if you can tell a story, you should. Hmm. That was one of her closing remarks. Yeah, I mean, and you, it shows in her work that she's, uh, she's trying to tell as many stories as she can in as many ways as she can, it seems, and doing a great job. And so are you. Thank you. It's been fun to work with you this week. Uh, that's our wrap-up on the, the stars that we interviewed this week, but I do want to talk about two more things. Roger Derling, who is the executive director of the Santa Barbara International Film Festival, has done a really, really good job. Year after year after year, he just gets better and better. And he decided to spend his time, cave dwelling, by writing a book, Cinema in Flux, A Year of Connecting Through Film, which is exactly what we did this last year during this pandemic. Uh, it'll be out in September. It's a really great book. It's hardcover, beautiful photography, and he, and he does on every page a synopsis of one or two movies. And he's really a good writer. So we're all looking forward. You can pre-order this book, by the way, um, even though it's gonna be released in September, um, by getting a hold of the Santa Barbara International Film Festival on their website, SBIF f.org recommend it and to wrap up the wrap up to wrap up the wrap <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm gonna read you uh, something written by Richard Camp I just really liked it and it has to do with with being in this pandemic and and kind of surviving it as the second responder which is something else uh, Roger Derling said, uh, because gosh, without movies, film, entertainment, TV, plays that were aired on television, even operas, what would you have done without all that this last year? Probably read a lot more, but... Uh, well, yeah. you are a big reader anyway. Well, it would, be, it would have been hard, that's for sure. I mean, movies were so central in the stories that they... Uh, that they allow us to explore and, and uh, just better understand the human condition. And what, when is it more important to do that than when you're sort of forced to uh, retreat from friends and family more, more than ever before? And they're doing the same exact thing globally. Mm -hmm. So what a remarkable time. I'm a huge reader too. I spent over 50% of my time reading, uh, but the rest of it watching movies and a lot of Netflix mainly. I'm dying to go back to the theater. I can't wait. I really like that. And I mean both stage, live, theater, and the movies. Are you, are you willing to go back to the movies yet? Uh, once I get uh, my vaccine and everything, I'll be glad to go back. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for okay. sure. Okay. And for the record, I'm vaccinated and we've known each other for over a decade. So this, this has all been copacetic. Lickety split, all fine. Yeah. <laughs> um, just, you know, how to say that. Okay, so what Richard Camp wrote is, we go to the theater to be touched in so many ways by this most communal of the arts. Theater cannot exist without stories from writers who astonish and touch with their imaginations, without actors who touch, who touch by bringing these stories to life with their living, breathing characterizations or without directors and technicians who laser focus the points of those stories and living portraitures to make sure the audience is touched by the tragedy or the comedy, as in the case of Sasha Baron Cohen. <laughs> and theater would wither on the vine were it not for the audiences who sit patiently in their dark cocoons in breathless anticipation of having their hearts broken or their funny bones tweaked as they wait simply to be touched.
Beautiful. I thought that was great. Um, John Keats, his quote is, touch has a memory. That's mm -hmm. a quote by John Keats, actually, mm -hmm. which is how this article started by Richard Camp. So we're wrapping it up this week. It's, it's been a lot of fun, it's been challenging. I've learned a heck of a lot about um, the difference between talking on the red carpet and mainly pausing. <laughs> <laughs> Goodbye, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you will do, please. Uh, check out over 240 videos. If you scroll down, you'll find them. And uh, leave us some comments. Thanks, everybody. <laughs>